Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. For the Christ, Christ our Savior. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand while I put your enemies under my foot. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? My Lord. No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him hmm. any, any question. more questions. <laughs> this is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise the Christ, Christ, our Lord. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters. Speak to us, O Lord, in this place. Speak to us in the calming of our minds and in the stillness of our souls. Speak to us in the words which we hear and the desires that we hold. Speak to us, O Lord, and we shall listen in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Verse 37 of the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. The 38th verse says, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second, is equally important. Hmm. Love your neighbor as, as yourself. yourself. <laughs> Love your neighbor as yourself. And so I want to talk briefly this morning about uh, taking responsibility. Taking responsibility. Two things I want to say, first of all. The Pharisees, who were very legalistic in the way they, they thought and in the way they actually portrayed themselves, had over 600 laws that they followed in one way or the other. But in the whole concept of them following the law, they did not include in it 
the law of God. Because one has to understand that the law of God far supersedes the law of man. Amen. When in the book of Exodus, Moses led the children out of the Sinai desert and wilderness into the land of promise. One of the first things that happened was that God gave to him a tablet of stone upon which was written the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. And in it, God was trying to rebuild. Are you with me this morning? Yes. He was trying to rebuild a people who had by this time wandered aimlessly in the desert for 40 years. Mm, my Lord. As a matter of fact, when Joshua brings them to the brink of the River Jordan, by that time, all of the older generation had practically died out. And what God needed to happen to them was the, a recircumcision. And I was looking at that and I thought that the law commanded that a baby boy, by the time he was eight days old, was circumcised according to the law of Moses. Yes. But now what God is expecting is a spiritual recircumcision. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Yes. A spiritual circumcision which would really bind them to himself. Mm -hmm. And so in all of that, God was expecting a transformation to take place in the lives of his people. Secondly, in this whole concept of taking responsibility, we must understand even today, as we face the darkness of this pandemic, that every last one of us, in some way or the other, has to be responsible for our neighbor, for our family, and from, for our friend. Amen. And so, when we say, wear the mask, social distance, sanitize and wash your hands, what we are actually saying, we are going beyond the physical nature of what the competent authorities is asking us to do. And know that if we sit in the same community as everyone else, what we are doing is making sure that everyone is safe, everyone is secure, and that everyone has the opportunity to live. Are you with me? Oh, yes. And so that Brother Catechist Dean is tied up with the fact that Jesus says, first of all, you love God, and then you love your neighbor as yourself. And I don't never met, Brother Ed, anyone who hates him or herself. Even as a person, I know that as a, a counselor, sometimes we have to deal with, with children who cut themselves, who talk about committing suicide. But even that is a cry for help. And most of the time, a person can be saved when we listen. A person can overcome drug addiction when we reach out to them. A person can overcome alcoholism 
when we have the ears and the attentive nature and character of God to be able to see what they are going through and to reach out to them in love. And so, St. Augustine of Hippo says that a multitude of love covers a multitude of sin. Yes. Because love is really not for me an emotion. It is totally, wholly, and solely a matter of your heart. When we love God, we give him everything that we are. Mm. You don't hold nothing back. It said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You know what that is? Oh, yes. That is the whole person. That is encapsulated in the fact that that sums up everything that a human being is. Mm. Nothing is left out. We are tripartite. What do I mean by that? We are simply made up of three parts. Mind, body, and spirit. Or mind, body, and soul. So it encompasses all of your, 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 let me see what I want to say, your biological, physiological uh, nature. And the heart is the most important thing in this body that beats. Because it is the sum total of who you are. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if we are going to love God, we have to give him everything. You cannot hold anything back. I feel that the problem with us today is that we believe that we could come to church, we could uh, say that we love Jesus, but then we still want to do what we want to do. That's not how it goes. God's inscribed for us. That when he enthrones himself in our heart, we are totally it. Is our in in Barbados they the fella have a saying that when they really love somebody, brother Rose, they say I love you bye bye. Now you can't get no worse than that or no better than that. <laughs> I love you bye bye. It means that I love you so much that it hurts that I'll do anything for you that I will go anywhere that you ask me to go. Mm. And we cannot be flippant about it. Uh, when I served down in South Caicos, and probably Providentialis in the, in the Turks and Caicos Islands, I remember I told you this little story about a young man who was enamored by this, this young lady in the class. Very nice looking young lady, very Sadiq and very uh, well put together. And he himself was a good young man. And as we were sitting in our little round table discussion, he was pouring out to the whole world how much he loved this young lady. And she said to him, boy, shut your mouth. Say yesterday, because you know when you say you love, oh, I'll, I'll swim the deepest sea and I'll cross the highest mountain. And she said, but yesterday I asked you to go right across the road and buy me some chicken and fries and you said no. <laughs> and it is, it is a test of who you are. You know, sometimes when we look and God puts trials and tribulations in our lives and there are some people who totally give up on him because they don't understand, neither can they take it. But what God is trying to say to us, what he's trying to do is to test us. You think you're going to get away? <clears throat> when your time of testing comes, right now what we are going through is a time of testing and of your faith for many Christians in the world. Yes. And if we love God, we have to do it even to the point as the old martyrs did to face death. And death does come, death will come. But you and I 
can never give up on God. Hmm. As we move through very quickly into season of Advent, one of the four candles that we will light in Advent is a candle of love. And every day, that must be demonstrated in our lives. And the fact is, as I move on, if we say we love God, we can never hate anybody else. My Lord. That is your challenge and your question. I have stood up in the middle of this floor many times, and I have said to you, if you want to see whether or not I am a Christian, then all of the things that have happened to me and all of the things that people have said, I have still turned around and helped them. Mm. When they fell into the pit according to Psalm 35 that they dealt for me, I lifted them out. Mm, my Lord. Because it shows that if you are loving God so deeply, you don't care what is happening to you. You must care about the other person. Yes, yes. In the story of the Good Samaritan, and I heard the late Dr. Martin Luther King said this in one of his sermons on love. In the story of the Great Samaritan, when the priest and the Levite passed by, they looked at the man on the ground. And their question was, if I stopped to help this man, what would happen to me? Mm, Hello? Yes, uh -huh. Would I find myself in the same predicament? Will I be robbed? Will I be murdered? Will I be beaten up? What will happen to me? But when the Samaritan came by, he reversed the question. And his question was, if I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? What will happen to him? He'll die. And so when we look at our neighbors, when we look at those around us, even those who hurt us and do us wrong, we must pose the question, if I do not help, what will happen to me? And I will hasten to say to you that the mission of the church is the mission of love, where we reach out to individuals in love, and where we take our hand and we pull them up from despair, from disease, from desperation, from depression, and from death. That is why you have to share every day. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel of love. Don't get it wrong. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel of love. We do not exist in a vacuum by ourselves, people. Anybody who believes that that is so is a lost soul. We exist in a community that is bound together by love. We exist in a church that is bound together by love. We exist in times when love must be the watchword. And even though it hurts, we have to understand the responsibility that we have for each other. So Jesus puts it succinctly, he puts it powerfully, and he puts it in a way that impacts all of our lives. If you're going to be here, if you're going to say that you are a Christian, if you're going to say that you are a believer, you've got to love God first. You have to love 
your neighbor as yourself, and he says it's equal. You don't just position it. You don't say, I'll take this and leave that. You gotta take all of it together. You have to walk with it together. And in the end, my brothers and sisters, we have to love each other as we love God. Amen. We don't see him, but he's here. Amen. Yes. His presence is with us. Always. His yes. word is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us to guide us, to protect us, and to fight for us. But my brothers and sisters, even if that is so, we must learn how to fight for one another, how to be responsible for one another, and how to live for each other. This is the great commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. In the name of Jesus, amen. my brothers and sisters, amen. amen. Thank you so very much.